Hey everybody, welcome back to the front porch. For the past couple of videos, we've been upgrading the suspension on this Maverick X3 here. And we have one more job to do, and that is to set the ride heights. Let's get that done so we can get this thing ripping finally. So it is important to note that there are many variations and procedures for setting ride height on a car. Today we'll be doing a procedure relevant to these custom springs that are made just for this specific car right here. So we will not be exactly following the Can-Am manual or the Fox race tune, which you can find online. But many of the things we're about to do here are still relevant to those procedures as well. So there's still some good information that you can pick up here. If you are tuning your factory stock suspension from the manual, they're going to have some uh, different procedures. They're going to have you measure things like from the top of the preload collar here up to the top of the shock body and other things like ex fully extended shock length with the car jacked up off the ground. But for our procedure today, that's going to be completely irrelevant. We're going to do what we have to do to get the proper ride height set on this car, which is going to be 15 inches in the rear and 15 and a half inches on the front with 30 inch tires. Even if you do have a fully stock suspension from the factory, I still recommend you do a ride height check as per the Can-Am manual. And also there's some Fox race tunes that you can find online for the Maverick X3. You can find that very easily in a search. Typically from a dealer, these cars will come sitting pretty low. I've heard some guys say it's getting better, but still you want to check this for sure. Um, one visual indicator at a glance, you can see that if someone's not touched the ride height from a, a dealership is these radius rods at the rear here will be almost level which means the car is sitting low and you're not using all that suspension that you paid tens of thousands of dollars for. So I highly recommend that you double check that and go through the procedure as per the manuals. Okay, so before you start anything, you wanna make sure the car is parked on a nice flat level surface and also that your tires are inflated to your personal preference where you normally run them at. A few pounds of air difference can probably knock your ride height measurement off by about a half an inch, maybe more. One of the main differences between a factory suspension setup or a Fox race tune setup is they set the ride height with no weight in the vehicle. But because my spring rates take into consideration the weight of my car, my accessories, my driver and passenger, etc., is what I've done is uh, filled the car with some bags of soil and some other items here, which equals the weight of my driver and passenger. And also you can see here in the back, I've uh, loaded some cargo up that I may typically take out on a day trip. Before we take the initial measurements to see where our ride height is sitting at right now, we'll have to get the scrub out of the car and settle this, uh, the suspension. So I'm just gonna roll it back a few times, just like this, back and forth. You could also uh, run the car around the yard, around the block kind of thing, but for today, I'll call this good enough. I'll rock the suspension a little bit to get it to settle. A couple more back and forths just to get the scrub to come out of the car. Now we can take our initial measurements to see how far we have to adjust. Like I mentioned before, we're looking for 15 inches of ground clearance in the rear of the car for our setup. So we're going to measure just above the skid plate and under the metal body here in this seam. I'll take the measurement. And we're about 14 and three quarters right there. So we have about a quarter inch to come up on the rear. For a front ride height measurement, I'll show you a pretty good place you can do that on the X3 here. You can see there's a round tube right here. It runs from side to side under the car. So I'll measure from the bottom of this tube right here to the ground. But you got to note that this tube here is about one inch higher than the bottom of the car where you would normally measure ride height. So you're going to subtract one inch from the bottom of this tube. So if this measured 16 inches, subtract one and your measurement is actually 15 inches. So that's a good accurate spot you can measure from under the car. The Fox race tune instructions will have you measuring on the side of the body here, but because it's so rounded, you could probably be off by about a, up to a half an inch if you measure from this point. So the round tube I showed you up front, subtract one inch is the best way to go. So I'll go ahead and measure from the bottom of that bar I just showed you. Looks like we're a little under 14 and a quarter so subtract one and that's around 13 and a quarter so we're going to have to come up a good couple inches at least to get into specifications here i did contact shock therapy to make sure that was within the realm of acceptability as far as adjustment they said i should have no problem and the 64 inch cars like a little more preload anyways and uh it's going to be about a two to one ratio here on the spring which means if i compress the spring one inch it's going to bring the ride height up two inches so I'll compress the spring a little more than an inch and then we'll come back and recheck everything. 
Okay, so you can see I have the front of the car jacked up off the ground here, so all the weight is taken off the springs. Then next I'll come in here, I'll take a measurement just for reference from the top of the shock body down to the top of the preload collar. And then I'll bust loose this top nut here, which is just kind of like a jam nut, get it up out of the way. And I'll screw the spring down about one inch, which should bring my ride height up about two inches. And also to note, obviously you want to do equal measurements and adjustments on each side of the car to keep it equal. Normally on a stock spring setup, you can kind of use one hand with a glove and turn the preload collar up here. Use your other hand and spin the spring as you go and get it all to draw down. But unfortunately with this one, the uh, spring is spinning and uh, the preload collar is very tight to turn. So I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way here with this um, spanner wrench, unfortunately, on these fine threads. So it's going to take a little bit. We'll get back when I'm done that. But a couple other options, if you do have a spring compressor around, which I don't, you could uh, compress the spring and take the tension off it to make the nut up top freely spin. Uh, another trick guys do is use a ratchet strap to uh, compress the spring enough to get the tension off the preload collar. But I don't think uh, ratchet strap hooks will fit in up here for me. So like I said, I'm gonna do this the uh, slow, old, painful way. So I did have to end up using the spanner wrench for the whole one plus inches of adjustment on the other side. That was a serious pain in the ass going like an eighth of a turn at a time. But fortunately this one here, I'm able to turn by hand. Like I mentioned before, I can grab the spring and grab the other upper nut and keep it turning. So this one will be a lot quicker, but uh, something you might want to consider if you're going to do this is grab a cheap Princess Auto or Harbor Freight spring compressor that you can fit on the spring in the car and compress it down so you can turn the nut easier. That was pretty serious pain in the ass on the other side, but this one will go quite a bit quicker for me here. Okay, so I got those preload collars uh, down to exactly four and a half inches here. It was a little shy uh, of three and a half inches before, so I moved it a little over an inch and we need a little over two inches of ride height gain. So moving it down that much should get us very close to 15 and a half inches on the front here. So next I'll uh, let the car down off the jack. I'll roll the car back and forth to get the scrub out of it and let the suspension settle and then we'll remeasure it. And we'll take a measurement again at the bottom of that bar. Looks like we're at about 16 and a quarter. So minus one, that's 15 and a quarter. So we have to come up a quarter inch. So I'll just bring those preload collars down a little bit more and uh, repeat the process until I'm at 15 and a half inches. Also, I forgot to mention, if you are setting ride height with a Fox IQS system, uh, Shock Therapy recommends having the system powered up and in soft mode. So it's what I've done is uh, move the preload collars down another 3 16 of an inch. I settled the suspension again. We'll go ahead and measure off our measuring point at the bottom of the bar. And we're exactly at 16 and a half inches. So subtract one inch and that's 15 and a half, which is exactly where we want to be with a uh, 30 inch tire. So perfect. So now that we have our front ride height set up properly, we'll recheck the rear here. I've transferred some weight to the back from bringing the front end up. So it's probably dropped a little bit more. And we are a little over a quarter inch shy. So unlike the front shocks, which are a two to one ratio, the rears will be a one to one. So for every inch I compress the springs in the rear, it'll bring the ride height up one inch. I'm just over a quarter inch off. So I'll preload these springs with the collars about a little over a quarter inch and come back and check again. And we should be right on. Okay, so I've made those adjustments to the rear of the car here. Exact same procedure as the front. I broke free the jam nuts at the top, jacked the car up off the ground to get the weight off the spring. I screwed down the preload collars about one quarter of an inch, dropped it back on the ground, rolled it back and forth and rocked the suspension to get it to settle and get the scrub out of the wheels. So we'll recheck after the adjustments here. And on that one, I actually overshot almost a quarter of an inch. I'm not going to worry too much about that because I expect this, uh, these springs and suspension to settle a little bit over the first one to 300 miles kind of thing. So I'll take it for a couple drives, bring it back in, recheck everything and fine tune it. So now that we've got this good, we have one more job to do and, and that is to set the crossover rings to the proper position. Now that we have our ride height set properly and our springs preloaded, we can go ahead and tighten back down the jam nuts on all four corners of the car so it's locked in place. Okay, so on to setting the crossover ring gap. The crossover rings are right here. There's two of them. One of them acts like a jam nut, just like up top on the preload collars. And the purpose of the crossover rings on a dual spring setup 
is to cancel out the top spring when the suspension reaches a certain point of compression. So as the uh, suspension compresses, the spring divider is going to come up and hit the bottom of this crossover ring here. And what that's going to do is cancel this lighter top spring out and all the work is going to be done by this heavier bottom spring here. So the top spring is going to take care of the first couple inches of travel and all the smaller bumps and stuff like that. When you get into more harsh, bigger bumps, the bottom spring is going to do all the work after the top spring gets cancelled out by the crossover ring here. So in my setup, I'm going to go for a two inch gap between the spring divider and the bottom of the crossover ring here. On the front, I'm going to go for a one inch gap. The reason we go for a differential from front to rear is when the vehicle is in motion, the back of the car will squat, the front will pick up a bit. So as the car is moving, that's going to kind of average us out to about an inch and a half gap right here. It's kind of tough to measure two inches in here with a tape measure or anything like that. So one trick I do, I just cut out a piece of cardboard two inches long here. I can stick that in behind the spring, put it on top of the spring divider and just screw down the crossover until it touches the top of the cardboard. And then I know I have it exactly a two inch gap and then I'll tighten the jam nut back down on the crossover rings up here and uh, we're all set. So just like the preload collars up top, I'll just knock the jam nut free here. Stick my piece of cardboard in. Now I'll run this ring down until it touches the cardboard so I know I got a two inch gap. Okay, so I got that ring ran down now, touching the cardboard, so I know I have exactly two inches. Next, I'll run this top ring down. I'll tighten back down this lock nut here. You can see sometimes both nut nuts move, so you might want to go back and forth. I just lost a little bit of gap there, but Move back down to the bottom one, tighten it up. Back up to the top. Now that's all locked in with a two inch gap. So now I have my one inch gap set in the front here. You could go up to a two and a half inch gap in the rear and a one and a half in the front. And that'll give you a little bit more of a flush ride because you'll be using the lighter top spring through more of the suspension travel. But on mine today, I've decided to do uh, two inches on the rear and one inch on the front. I just want to see how on a stiffer setting, the new suspension compares to my old stock suspension. So I'm gonna go with a little bit stiffer setting on the crossover rings and just see how it works out. So now I have my crossovers set up on the opposite side of the car. So all four corners are done and good to go. One thing I will mention here before we do go is you may be able to see that the spring has been rubbing on the crossover right here a little bit. I'm not sure if you can notice that. That is normal to a point with dual rate spring kits, but you can see on this car that the spring is bowed a little bit and you may be able to notice the spring divider is not perfectly level. Normally the rule of thumb on these is to take the tips of the springs where they end on the top and the bottom and have them 180 degrees opposite of each other. That normally centers things up pretty nicely but in this case that's not working out that way. So what I'll do is jack the car up off the ground, rotate the top spring independent of the bottom spring until I can see that I have everything nice and centered as I possibly can right here. I'll repeat that process in all four corners of the car and our job is all done. Okay, so that about wraps up our little video series here on the suspension upgrades we've done to the car and the basic setup. Wasn't that amazing? Wow! Now, unfortunately, it is going to snow tonight. This ground's going to be all white in the morning. The ATV trails are starting to shut down. It's almost time to get the snowmobiles out. So unfortunately, it's going to be a few months probably before I can give a really good uh, review and feedback of all the upgrades we've done here and let you guys know how it worked out. But uh, give us a subscribe, uh, stay tuned. There's still some more to come this year. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.